Okay, so welcome to week two of NaNoWriMo. I actually started recording yesterday, which was Wednesday, which would be the start of the second week, the eighth, but I was really smart and deleted all of my footage that I recorded yesterday. Oh well, starting today, such as it is. One of my intentions for this week was to talk a little bit more about why I'm doing the things I'm doing, um, because I kind of showed what my writing process is daily. Like I lit the candle, I did the tarot, etc. but I didn't really explain why I was doing those things, so how'd I do that? I tried to explain my tarot and oracle process, but I didn't, I don't feel like do a great job. I said, oh, I don't usually flip this card over, and then I immediately flipped it over. I didn't explain what was going going on. So I'm going to attempt to do that now. So this is the Numinous Tarot by Cedar McLeod. I do have a recording of like flipping through this deck for the first time on my YouTube. I'll link to it. I did last week. I'll link to it again. It is a deck that I like to use for my creative purposes because it's done entirely in watercolor and watercolor is the medium that I primarily work in. The creator of this deck, not only do they do watercolor, they are also an author like me. And another thing is this deck is entirely meant to be non-binary. So last week I mentioned the card the Nurturer instead of the Empress and all of the gendered cards are redone like that. The suits were renamed. We've got the bells, which are swords, the candles, which are wands, helms which are pentacles, and vials which are cups. And then for the court we have the dreamers which are pages, the explorers are the knights, the creators are the queens, and the mystics are the kings. And I do tend to have to use this guidebook both to look up the names if I can't remember. It's really only the court cards that I can't remember. The minor arcana are pretty intuitive plus they have the numbers on them, and I do like to see what the author has written about these cards because I feel like it's very insightful and it often resonates really strongly with how I feel about the cards and how I'm feeling about my life. And then we have the Sacred Creators Oracle by Chris Ann, and this is a, a, a guidebook specifically for creators, people pursuing creator creative careers and really just making creative practice a part of their life. What I do first is I pick a card from the Sacred Creators Oracle, and I always start with thinking about whatever the prompt is for this card. So for example, for this card, it will be a message that I feel I need to receive today in terms of my creative practice. And for Nano, I am focusing specifically on my writing. When it's not Nano, it's usually a little more vague, you know, also my painting, etc. Here we have it. I like to pick jumpers or just when a card's sticking out in a way that catches my attention. We have Lead Your Metamorphosis. And like I said in the last vlog, I don't usually flip my cards over to see them because then I get in my head about whether it's the right card to be pulling or not. But in this deck, since the next two cards I pull relate to this one, I like to flip it over and see what it is. And I am actually going to bring you down closer so you can see what I'm doing. So we have here the card that'll be kind of the center of our reading, the Lead Your Metamorphosis. I like to put away the other cards so they're not getting in the way. I take this deck and I shuffle and the first thing I think about is what do I need to embrace in order to kind of lean into this and embody this message? This card I lay down upside down, as I will in the next one. Question for the next position is, what do I need to lean away from or avoid to embody this message? Okay, there we go. Sometimes multiple cards will come out, and if it's like half the deck, then I'm not going to think of that as a sign, but maybe if it's two cards, I will read both of them, which I did, I think, yesterday, or the last time I did this. I try to do this every day, but it doesn't always happen. So I flip them over. We have the Six of Vials, which is the Six of Cups, and we have the Ace of Candles, which would be the Ace of Wands, and I'm going to look up Lead Your Metamorphosis first. And it has an essential meaning, a self-care message, and then a longer bit. The essential meaning is freedom, transformation, and evolution on the edge of something miraculous, a relationship between inner and outer beauty, trust, cycles of death and rebirth, a massive breakthrough. Self-care message, hiding, staying small, and staying where you feel comfortable. Metamorphosis, change, yep, it's that time again, and this change is going to be transformational. It's time to leave the dark cocoon behind, to break out of your shell, and to show off those gorgeous wings you've been readying. Many times, and in biz, we choose to stay small. 
We choose the comfort of the warm cocoon over the freedom of something spectacular, and this cozy illusion of safety can lull us gently to sleep. Have you noticed that you've chosen the comfort of the old and reliable more than once, even though you long for something new and exciting? Choose the emerging you over the humdrum and expected today, and lead your metamorphosis with your inner beauty. You are, in every sense, sitting in your own control tower. You can plot your flight through life, and you get to decide how far you go and how great you become. This complete transformation is required in order to flourish, manifest, and attract the new things that you are seeking. Are you ready to test those wings? And then there are some journaling questions or meditate, like, questions to meditate on. I don't usually use them. I may glance at them, but I am not super focused on that right now. So for the Six of Vials, I generally speaking know what the Six of Cups means, but I do like to look and see what this author has to say about the Six of Vials. Upright. Once we move on from loss and grief of the Five of Vials, we're able to look back on our past with more positive feelings, perhaps even nostalgia. When this card comes up, it can indicate the way your thoughts have turned, looking over the ways that you've grown and changed in the last few weeks, months, years in regards to your past. All of us live lives built on the day that came before. Who you are and what you're doing now are a direct result of the past, what happened to you there, and the decisions that you made. This card can also represent being united with someone or something that you haven't seen in a long time. You might run into an old friend downtown, find your high school diary, or return to your hometown for the first time in a while. When this card is upright, it usually signals that this encounter will be a positive one. The Six of Vials can further represent our ancestors and the connections we have to them. Look to your roots and remember to send them love if they deserve it. There is a reversed section here, but since this is what I need to lead into, I'm going to focus more on the upright version of this card. And similarly to how I said that I'm going to be looking at the upright version of the Six of Cups or the Six of Vials, since this is what I'm leaning into, I am going to look at the reversed meaning, since this is what I'm avoiding. We have, when reversed, the light has gone out, we feel stifled, stuck, and uninspired. We wonder where our motivation is gone and can't seem to muster up any for doing what we used to love doing. The appearance of this card reversed suggests a need to reflect and reconnect with what inspires passion in us. Perhaps we need to re-engage with the people and things we love, or perhaps what we love has changed and we need to discover a new source of motivation. Sometimes, too, these cards can indicate that it's simply not time for us to start working on something new yet. Have you finished what you're currently working on? It can be easy to get ahead of yourself and line up passion after passion until you've started 20 things and complete none of them. This card emphasizes focus. There's a single candle, a single flame, not multitudes. Oh boy. <laughs> so, when I say that the messages from this deck via the guidebook really relate to my own life, that is a great example. I think that the Ace of Candles is definitely saying to me that I need to avoid creating too many projects and spreading my focus too thin. I need to avoid trying to do a multitude of things. And that was a really, really long in-depth explanation to what I do with my tarot. And I do try to do this every day. It doesn't always happen, but I do my best. So we've got our candle here. This is The Writer, which is Amber, Balsam, and Spices from Fly Paper Products. I was gonna say for some reason it doesn't have their name on it, but it does. So I'm going to trim my wick. I would usually use my wick trimmer, but I don't feel like to get up to get it, so I'm just gonna use my scissors. This candle has an immense cold throw, which means it is a very strong scent before it's lit, but once it's lit, it's not so strong, which is actually really good because the cold throw of this candle actually can make me kind of nauseous and give me a headache. I don't, it's, I don't think it's necessarily an overwhelming smell. I think I'm just more sensitive to smells. The reason I light this candle is because our bodies like triggers for things. And I don't mean trigger as in something that brings up trauma or anything like that. What I mean is my brain processes the scent of this candle being lit and burning and my brain goes, oh, I know that smell. It always happens when it's time to write or it only ever happens when it's time to write because I don't obviously take this candle with me when I go out. But if I'm writing at home, I will light it. And even like if I'm traveling to like a family member's house, I'll take it with me. But like if I go to the coffee shop, I'm not going to light the candle, of course. But it's a great way to get my brain in the mood. And of course, you don't have to necessarily use a scented candle. You could use something like lip balm that you put on or lotion that you only ever wear when you're writing. It's something specific with a specific scent that gets you in the writing frame of mind. And that's why I do that. So now that I've spent like 10 minutes explaining all of this, we are going to get down to writing today. <laughs>
Okay, so it is technically Wednesday. The vlog will be going up ideally soon. I'm almost done with it. I've pretty much edited everything except this, but I just wanted to put in a bit of a conclusion, I suppose, since things were kind of off towards the end. Last week was rather rough. I It's, it's hard starting a week on a Wednesday and remembering what happened. So actually, I'm going to open up a calendar real quick. Ravioli's laying on my keyboard. You'll see it in the next vlog. He is baby. Nope, that's the internet. Here we go. All right, so last week, over the weekend, and like towards the end of the week, like maybe Thursday through Sunday, I had jaw pain, extreme jaw pain. It was really, really bad. I think the worst was Friday, and then Saturday it was slightly better, but it was still pretty painful. And then towards Sunday, Monday, it's gotten better and better. My jaw still does hurt a little bit. As far as they know, it's not an infection. It's not anything like that. It's just strain, like, you know, stuff like that. And so that really sucked, obviously. It made writing difficult. It made everything difficult because I was in pain constantly, which I'm familiar with from my chronic migraines, but still, it doesn't make it easy. And then on Monday, we noticed that Cassie was exhibiting some symptoms that suggested she was unwell. I'm not gonna super go into detail because it's it's kind of gross but we had to take her to the vet get her looked at yesterday on tuesday and now she is on the mend hopefully so it's just been extra things going on so this week was actually really kind of rough thankfully it didn't really affect my writing i was able to get decent writing done but i did really struggle some days because of the pain i was in because of me being worried about my cat and also just because i wasn't sure where certain parts of the story was going I actually did treat myself to starting to write the glossary. You know how fantasy books have glossaries in the back that explain characters, explain terms, all that? Started writing one of those and it was just so much fun and such an easy thing to do on the days when I was in a lot of pain and didn't feel really up to thinking hard because I really just got to info dump about the aspects of my world that I'm the most excited about. So it's not an essential part of the story, but it was a nice way to keep myself writing, keep myself thinking about the world, and just keep going even when I didn't feel great. I could have taken breaks those days, and I was very, very close to doing so, but it was that wanting of a sense of normality. I wanted to, you know, do this one little thing to feel better, and it was within my, you know, within my grasp, within my ability to do that, so... I don't want you to feel like you need to always be writing, even for Nano. Like, if you're not feeling well, you can take a day. But it was important to me that I at least attempted it. If I had, you know, been miserable, been uncomfortable, been unable to help myself through writing, I wouldn't have done it. I also finished the main storyline. Um, I wasn't exactly sure how the last chapter of that will end. It kind of wasn't sure, wasn't really going anywhere. People are just kind of wandering around not really doing anything. So I decided, you know, I, the story is pretty much over. I know what's going on. I just don't know exactly how to wrap it up. We'll leave it. And I went back to the flashback timeline and I've been working on that for the past couple days and I'm starting to make progress on that. So that's everything. I wanted to say thank you for tuning in to this vlog. I have really been enjoying making these. You'll have to let me know what you think. It seems like y'all like them. They seem to be pretty popular compared to the rest of my content. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. So be sure to comment, like, subscribe, you know, ring the bell, all that silliness. And thank you so much for spending some time in the Stet Studio with me today. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.